took yeah. it. Yeah. We'll go both sides. It's awkward, yeah. <laughs> this is what we were talking about last time, awkward high fives. <laughs> uh, I, I used to be a more higher dose vitamin E. Now, not so much. Um, again, if you, the classic study was, I believe it was vitamin C, vitamin E, and I think beta carotene in smokers. So like several years ago, what they found was it actually made their cancer rates worse. Oh. Um, again, that doesn't necessarily apply to this population per se. And they were using pretty high doses in isolation in a group that already is doing something that's promoting cancer. So again, doesn't mean that directly that's crosses over. Those are all antioxidants, so that they're on the assumption that that smoking right. has has a lot of free radical damage associated Correct. with it. They're trying to ameliorate that by taking these antioxidants. Correct. Yeah, and they got the opposite result of what they initially planned. Um, vitamin E, I do think like a, what's called a mixed tocopherol is going to be better. So you get all the kind of subforms that you find in nature. And then you can go one step down below that and something that's called um, tocopherols uh, or tocotrienols actually is what it is. And there's some mixed data on that. I know some supplement companies have tried to use that as a supplement for muscle recovery. Yeah, it's a data on that's kind of mixed and T a little bit more on the expensive side. TOCO, the TOCO. Yeah, TOCO yeah, trials. Seen, yeah, yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah I, I think they're okay, but I don't, yeah, I don't think it's anything that magical. So I tell people, yeah, if you want to add it once in a while, that's fine. Look for mixed tocopherols, and you're probably going to be okay. Stay in the lower dose, eh, 200 IU's, probably somewhere in there, and that's probably going to be on the higher end, I would say. What about zinc and magnesium? Yeah, so a lot of athletes in terms of micronutrients, I would say magnesium is probably going to be the lowest. And that's usually because they don't eat a lot of green looking things, especially natural green things. And Part of chlorophyll. Yeah, so chlorophyll, you can basically kind of substitute chlorophyll for magnesium. They're super similar if you look at the structures. Right. Um, so a lot of people don't get enough magnesium. It's a pretty cheap supplement to buy. Again, the form on that definitely makes a huge difference. The one to stay away from is magnesium oxide. The conversion rate of that's only like 8%. And a quick and dirty way to look at your multivitamin to see if it's worth a crap, I'll look at the vitamin E and what form they use, and then I'll look at magnesium and what form they use. So if they only use like kind of, they're not using a mix to cofferols for vitamin E yeah. or like the not natural version, and then magnesium, they're using magnesium oxide only. Yeah, that makes me wonder like a little a magnesium bit. Magnesium citrate. Uh, so citrate is good. Glycinate is good. Citrate's okay. Pretty much any of the non-oxide forms are pretty good. How much amount? I don't think the testing is real strong for uh, magnesium. There's some people who say, well, you can do like a red blood cell analysis. Maybe, but again, the downsides of magnesium are not really that profound. Again, it's GI distress. So I tell people, ah, oh, just take a bunch at night. And you're probably going to be okay. Um, zinc is probably the second one people can be low on, right? So people heard of the supplement ZMA, so zinc, magnesium, aspartate. They also throw B6 in there too. Yeah, actually, I've always wondered why they throw B6 in there. Like, why, why yeah. is that necessary? This, I, this is like a real question. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> yeah, this is like an interview question. Like, yeah, yeah. Hey, this is something I really want to know because I've no, this I, for a long time. I've wondered the same thing. So if you go back to ZMA, right? So you know, yeah. Victor Conte was a guy who developed ZMA, right? The Belco, the Belco guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you actually filed a patent on it for those particular amounts. They did a follow-up study in basketball players. But the study in basketball players, they were already very zinc deficient and probably borderline overtrained. And they did show that, ooh, it increased their testosterone a little bit. Right? So everyone's like, oh, ZMA, testosterone supplement. Right. And then you go to all the forums and they're like, oh, it gives me the weirdest dreams. Right. Oh, it must be working. <laughs> and so in my head, I'm like, well, why does that happen? So I bought the, z the form that they use, the zinc, the magnesium, and the B6 all separately. And I did this on myself and some clients like a long time ago. And it appears that the B6 is what gave people the weird dreams uh, okay. and I think it's because of the neurotransmitter conversion um, if you take the b6 out they don't seem to have the weird dreams all right and I can't prove this but my guess is that they figured this out and by putting the b6 in there and you get these wacky dreams you're like oh, I got weird dreams it must be improving my sleep right 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 and the reality is a lot of people are low on magnesium a lot of people are low on zinc so it's good but a lot of times people do too much zinc. So they'll take a ZMA and then they'll take a like twice the recommended amount of their normal daily multivitamin. Gotcha. And their zinc levels can get too high. 
biggest thing with that is that zinc will then start depleting out copper. So usually look on your multivitamin to see if they have a small amount of copper also. And once you're replete in zinc, you can take more and it doesn't do anything for your testosterone levels. Mm -hmm. So if you're very low on zinc and you replete that and you get back to a normal baseline, yeah, your testosterone may go up a little bit. But if you're already pretty good on zinc and you add more, it's not going to make them testosterone go up anymore. So the, so the B6 was just in there to make people think that it's working? That's so, my so guess. Speak, like, this triggers some that dreams kind of, and <laughs> you're good. Yeah, that kind of reminds me of like, I, I remember reading about tooth, toothpaste where like, they used to have toothpaste that, that works great for actually cleaning teeth just fine. But then when they put something in it to make it bubble up, because oh, yeah. soap makes bubbles. Yeah. Bubbles make things clean. Yeah. So once it was like bubbles in your mouth, it was like, oh, I'm really cleaning <laughs> my teeth now. <laughs> that's and, and it didn't work any better, but people felt like it was working yeah. better. And so toothpaste sales fucking skyrocketed. Oh, that's interesting. That, that wouldn't surprise me. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like putting beta alanine in something that doesn't need beta alanine because it, yeah. it gives you a little tingle and you're like, oh, yeah. this thing is fucking powerful, yeah. even though you've actually experienced none of the benefits of the thing. Yeah, that's why they put beta alanine in every pre-workout. Right. Right. So beta alanine is... A, it's an amino acid.